Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Today's gonna be absolutely incredible. Of course, there was Tinley Park, the big reptile show. So a bunch of people are coming to visit, including my friends from South Africa. They are absolutely amazing. They do a lot of venomous snakes. They do a bunch of cool stuff. It's gonna be really cool there. Some of Kevin Curley's crew from Nerd are gonna be here. JP Reptiles. It's gonna be an absolutely amazing day showing stuff around. So what do you say? We just jump right into it and have an amazing day together. So I am super excited. Like I had mentioned, my friends here from South Africa are in town. This is Arno and Heidi. They put on uh, the most awesome awesome reptile expo in South Africa and are just great people so whenever I go over there they take care of us so you know the thing I love about South Africans is they are they're crazy <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty much crazy so uh, we figured hey you know what the fact that you guys work with snake bites with black mambas and all kinds of stuff you actually aid with the medical side and plus you have a just an unbelievable amount of experience I figure what better way than to go ahead and just have you hold some uh, venomous snakes today how's that sure. sound yeah. so this is actually Bruce's Leucistic monocle cobra. This is Jasmine, and uh, let's have at it. And this is uh, truly uh, the mastery of handling venomous snakes. The thing is, is that Arno is definitely very, very competent when it comes to venomous snakes. I always tell people I've handled venomous snakes a ton, but I wouldn't call myself an expert. I would just say that I've got experience. Uh, you, you know, I don't know if anyone's an expert. So, you know, tell me a little bit, like, I mean, you guys are working with black mambas, which are so different than something like this. Uh, they are a lot different. They, they're larger, they are far more flighty, and they're actually more scared of you. So they okay. bite a lot more easily than what the cobras do. But when they strike, they strike and let go where the cobras right. hang on and chew. And once they start chewing, you get more venom in you. So oh, okay. either one is, is, it's not fun to get bitten by. No. Um, but if, if you're careful with them and you don't really mess with them too much, uh, they should they should be fine. And I think the thing that I always uh, kind of marvel at when I'm working with guys like you, Arno, is uh, just the calmness that they have around venomous snakes. And that's what's important, right? You never want to not be calm. You know, you always want to pay attention. You want to let the snake kind of feel that comfort level. And uh, you can see how close his hand is, yet mm. he's in complete control because, again, he's got the vent over here. He's working with the snake. He's knowing exactly what it's going to do. So, uh, so, so in that's Africa, awesome. what okay. snake is kind of the, the one that is you know really responsible for the most bites um the serious bites are black mambas the ones with the most bites are mozambique spitters spitters yeah. um so the spitters bite but they, they don't kill that many people okay but they cause a lot of problems because you have necrosis and and uh, you know the kidney problems and all the rest that goes with it right and uh, as a result of that those are the ones that we worry about the most and funny enough those are the ones that the antivenom works the the worst on. Wow. Um, where the neurotoxins are actually quite easy to work with. Uh, right. You know, Cape Cobras obviously got a filthy neurotoxin that, that kills quickly, so does the Mambas. But um, if you get to a hospital, you're fine. Where with a spitting cobra, even if you get to a hospital quite soon, doesn't mean you're going to survive that well. Wow. Uh, a lot of them don't do well after um, spitting cobra bites. Bruce, have at it. What did you bring for Arno? So I actually brought our, uh, our uh, timber rattlesnake. This is Burt Reynolds right here. Oh, wow. Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. This is, this is dark. I, I've seen the pinkish ones, but um, the thing is they, they're protected here in the US, so you can't export them. So we right. don't ever get to see these. We get to see Western Diamondbacks, Eastern Diamondbacks, but I've oh, actually never seen a live male like black one like this. It's very, very nice. I'm super excited. I got and, a chance uh, to show you. Yeah, he's, he seems quite chilled. Um, timber raptors, are they, are they normally very aggressive or not? That so, he, so he actually has always been pretty aggressive with me. Um, I, there have been kind of times where I, I usually keep to the side of the cage all the time because he just, like I said, like a jack in the box, he'll come springing right out on me. But uh, a lot, most of the time he doesn't rattle. He doesn't start rattling until I really start messing with him. Like if I start yeah, getting so, him to move and rock. So then you know yeah. to stay out of his way. But he's, he seems quite cool. Let's see if I'm like getting the rest okay. out of you. Here go. There he goes. That's, that's more like him. <laughs> that's more like him. That's when he gets upset, yeah. Mm -hmm. That Bruce, that thing is, is changing much. It's even way darker now yeah, right. than the last time i seen it. I mean, it's getting those winter colors. He actually just too, like three weeks ago. Yeah, it's getting those winter blacks, and wow, that thing is gorgeous. Is he from this area? No, he is not. Um, he's actually, so uh, my understanding is that this is a mountainous locality, so he's a lot closer to Virginia-type area or something okay. like that, more and more closer to that. Do they have a lot of bites from them? Because I, I, I haven't read of many bites. So, so timber at this. I'm, my knowledge is sort of limited on it, but okay. uh, to be entirely honest with you, though, what, what, what I understand is more or less of the ones 
you don't really see mess with people too much. It's more yeah, like okay. a water moccasin or yeah, yeah, yeah. a copperhead or something. Yeah, like I think that. the range that these guys are in aren't really close to populated areas as much, so you don't mm. get as much. Most of the time, when you do see bites, it's usually from hikers, stuff okay, like that, people yeah. that are out in the bush. So these guys now, one of the problems with these guys that they're facing right now is that fungal issue. Okay? Oh so, yeah. So they're yeah, having a massive that. fungal issue, and it's wiping out a tremendous amount of timbers, especially in the northeast of the of the Have country. Have they not found any cure? No cure, and there's even now been some of that fungus that has been found here in Michigan in Massasauga Rattlers. So, wow. so the fungus is kind of spreading. I think a lot of times it might be about the climate change, the fact that we're not getting yeah. as deep a cold weather, and these animals aren't hibernating for as long. Mm. And that and the fungus the, isn't dying. Yeah. Right, the di fungus isn't dying. So maybe the fungus has been around for a long, long time, but it's always dead in the winter because of long, harsh winters. Now that the winters are more mild, the fungus is really growing. Okay, and in some areas sense. like New Hampshire, you know, sometimes 70 or 80 percent of the population of timbers are are dying off so wow. these guys are becoming you know it's becoming Extremely a major rare, yeah. Yeah, it's becoming an issue and people talk about climate change and they say it's not really happening and I've always said the herpes are the guys who know about it yeah. the most because my leopard tortoises didn't hibernate this year yeah. and we're finding snakes that in winter that we would normally only find in summer and like you just said you know the fungus isn't going away and we're seeing some of the populations are not producing as well as what they used to, the, few, the males aren't getting cold enough, yep. and uh, I think the reptiles and the amphibians are going to feel it first, and everyone else is going, oh, it's not really that hot, and, and yeah. yeah, it's it well, is think, a change. And I think it's like you said, I think even amphibians more so, you know, I mean, because they feel that change immediately. Kittrick virus has become yeah. a huge issue with them, and it's a very similar thing here with the rattlesnakes, so, uh, but this thing is this thing is gorgeous and so well behaved. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a way with them, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> they awesome. hate me, but love everyone else. How was Tilly, oh, man? Man, it was so cool. We had such a good time. It was our first time going, so it was just so much fun. So many cool animals. So That's many awesome. cool people. Met a lot of cool people That's there. Awesome. So. so what's the best story of the trip? Dude, best story of the trip. I got to meet Kevin. He's pretty cool. Oh but God. no, I, I was really touched. You know, my heart was touched, okay? I wanted to get an aquatic turtle. Okay. We had 20 minutes left before we had to leave. So me and Mary split up to kind of look for animals. Mary said, no turtle, okay? What do I do when I come around the corner? She's looking at aquatic turtles. What? Can you believe that? Aww. I just, I knew that was the Aww. one for me, man, right That's when I seen love. that. You That's know what love. I mean? That's, That's love. love. But I didn't buy it. Oh, so you know, so it's, okay. so it's a great story I'll tell the end. So yeah, exactly. But, yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of company from Tinley today, so we're gonna have a good time. Right? Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to see him. So right, cool. bring awesome. it on. Yo, know, it's so good to have Heidi and Arno here. You know, they are such good friends of mine, and uh, it's nice that I didn't have to travel all around the world to go see you guys. But I apologize, you you, you guys do. Uh, obviously, we have salt out. And uh, is this the first albino alligator you've held? It is. Oh my gosh. First you, one we've seen. Have you oh guys got any that in South Africa no. yet? Yeah. We have, we've had one or two um, leucistic uh, Nile crocs, oh, but yeah. not many. And um, the, you know, the people have these yellow ones. Like, Look, it must be head for albino. And I'm going, that's not how it works. And yeah. once you see this, you realize that no, it's something amazing. else. Gorgeous. Right? Yeah, I love her to death. And she's just such a sweetheart, right? I mean, she's so mm -hmm. well behaved and yeah. so trained good. So we love her to death. I can't wait till she gets big. Of course, I'm gonna show my friends, Ben and Jerry, these guys. Uh, I know that you guys have seen just about every cool animal on the planet, but uh, two at a cow king, I uh, probably haven't seen one of these guys no. before. <laughs> never <laughs> seen one before. And not an adult. I've seen photos right. of babies, but yeah. they've never raised two adults. Yeah, very died. few of them make it. Yeah, mm. very few of them make it. That's why we're so lucky to have Ben and Jerry. What do you think of the rarest thing that you guys have seen over there? Like what's crazy that like, Oh my gosh. Albino gaboon vipers. Oh yeah. Those are nice. Albino yeah. egg eaters. They've been Oh yeah, those, been that's cool. another one. That would um, be the boomslung. Yeah, albino boomslung. Boom adult. It was caught as an adult. Yellow oh with my. red eyes. Beautiful snake. Oh my gosh. Not even aggressive or anything. Very nice. Oh. But we have a lot of stuff which is which is really nice and fairly rare. Things like sun gazers. Yeah. You know, sun when, gazers when you stop there and you stop the vehicle and you get out and there's five of them sitting looking at you. That's a And dream. you go, they're probably going to trash this place and, and start growing wheat. And that's the sad part. You try to get into the conservation side as well yeah. it's not it's not just a pet trade or not just saving yep. people's lives this those animals need a bit of protection oh sometimes gosh, yeah. as well yeah i think when you're an animal person you do these kinds of things because you love the animals but i'm not going to lie to you being able to share this kind of experience with like-minded people is really special so having all these people in today has just been absolutely amazing i love arno and heidi for sure and i'm so excited to get a chance to spend some time with the nerd folks so uh this is just i tell you what i live for days like today
Okay, so I am here with the, <laughs> the nerd crew. You guys know the crazy man, Kevin McCurley. Well, this is his guys, Jeremy, and we've been What's friends forever. Yeah. You may, uh, you old time guys that watched Snake Bites TV might remember we did a scene with him in my dumpster once. He had a really good mustache, by the way. I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> no, no, don't bring that back up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, a bunch of the nerd crew here. You guys are amazing. Uh, we have a bunch of animals. You, know, you guys may not know this, but nerd uh, is a place that I get a lot of my stuff. I really respect these guys. Of course, we have Casper over here. We have Night Fury. And of course, we have Toothless all here. So you guys, who worked with Casper before? Yes, you guys did. actually worked with them? Yeah. That is awesome. I really appreciate it. You guys did an amazing job, dead serious. Thank so you. tell me what it's like to work with the evil morph god. Well, I mean, you got the ponytail. Bro. I know. Look so, at this. I mean, Look it's, at this. it's all about nice. fabulous hair. That's <laughs> what we're doing. <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. We get the chance to work with some incredible animals on a daily basis. And I mean, you can't get much better than that. It is amazing. And of course, these guys were at Tinley Park as well. So they kind of came to pay me a visit. And uh, I really do appreciate it. We've had a good time with you guys. Uh, of course, uh, do you remember Toothless? This guy when he was oh, a baby, or were you around? He wasn't I around, wasn't around yet. Okay, you I remember him? Yeah, That's right. We had, we actually had our name was written on the egg. It said BHB, so I better have gotten the right animal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you guys are awesome. So tell me some of the highlights. I mean, what's the best part and the worst part? The worst part's Kevin. <laughs> but, uh, yes. No, no, no. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin's great. I mean, he's a mastermind. But uh, seriously, is it just, I mean, what is your favorite part? I would honestly say just like the genetics behind everything, yeah. you know, Kevin does. Like, just like what it takes to, to yeah. make these animals. And like, yeah, people you know, don't realize that. Yeah, and you know, it's, it. it's not just, you know, putting two and two together. It's, yeah. it's a lot of, you know, critical thinking and knowing, you know, what. Yeah, you know, some of these projects what, can take what? five, six, seven, oh, eight yeah. years. I mean, some of them have the foresight to think that down yeah. the road. Yeah, and Kevin's so, work is just yeah, Kevin's amazing. So. I mean, he really is. He is literally the evil morph he god. Is. I mean, this guy yeah. is like he, his cerebral thought of animals has really changed the industry. It really you know, is. Including behavior. I mean, the behavior mm -hmm. side of monitors. I think monitor keeping got completely mm -hmm. changed because of Kevin. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't do this with a monitor ten years ago That's before true. Kevin did his thing. So, what's the big like? thing that you guys are the most excited about going for it in 2020. I'm really excited to see what we're able to do with the cow stuff. Oh, so yeah. we've, you know, we've just kind of broken the surface of yeah. what, what's possible with cow. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can start doing with that over the next couple of years. Oh my gosh, I can imagine, man. You guys are killing it over there and cows are amazing. So uh, so that's awesome, guys. Well, thank you guys for coming. I thank really appreciate it. Make America snake again. And, uh, hey. and, uh, and let, yeah, that part you can keep in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and and the visitors continue today. Of course, my buddy Jordan over here from JP Reptiles. I'm gonna put a link in the description to his stuff, his That's Instagram, cool, his YouTube and stuff like that. He's up in Canada, really cool newcomer to this trade and uh, doing amazing work. So regardless, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, how was Tinley, man? Tinley was amazing. I mean, this show was absolutely massive. I couldn't really? believe it. They're it's blowing out walls. It's getting bigger every year. It's just unbelievable. Oh my so. God, that is awesome. Well, welcome to my world. And uh, I'm gonna just show you around a little bit, okay? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> a little Bella time for you. What do you think? That is it's crazy. Isn't she amazing? It's like a puppy dog. It is. It literally is like a dog. I always say she's more like a cat because it's her world, right? She decides when she wants pets. Like she's <laughs> actually arching her back, putting her head up, wanting to get pet. Exactly. You don't need a dog if you have a Bella. <laughs> so obviously, man, you've been doing this now for a while. I mean, but you're a newcomer, but you've now yep. bred ball python, so you're officially a breeder. First year, four clutches. Next year, even more. I know, you're killing it. So what advice for someone that is getting into the game, whether it's ball pythons or anything, I mean, you've had to endure kind of building your brand quickly and you've done a really good job of it. So what's the advice that you would give people? I would say do a lot of research and surround yourselves with professionals and experts that are willing to give you guys as many advice as possible. I mean, learning from the experts, their mistakes or trials, tribulations. I've had so much guidance that have helped me get to this point today and it's, it's been really amazing to see how the community comes together when you get used Surround yourself with actual professionals and yeah. they teach you everything. So like some a mentor, mentorship. You want mentorship, a mentorship? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And never get discouraged. That's the hardest part is getting discouraged. Patience, what I've learned is, is the biggest thing. Is, is patience. You gotta be patient, you gotta keep going at it. Even today I get anxious, the clutches, the feedings, all that stuff, but the patience pays off, everything works out in the end. And just never get down on yourself, just keep going. That's it. Awesome, love it, dude. Absolutely amazing to have so much awesome company. And hey, whenever I get an excuse to play with some venomous snakes, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. If you like this video, here's another video of me playing with venomous snakes. Here's an entire playlist I think you guys are going to absolutely enjoy. Over here, you can hit that subscribe button. While you're at it, turn those post notifications on. Have a wonderful day and remember to be kind to someone. I promise. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>